I've always had a passion for being around and learning about animals. When I was younger, going to zoos and animal parks was always a part of my life. I wanted to share my passion with family and friends, so I started working with people that loved animals as much as I did, and my YouTube channel was born. Hello. Today we are at Connecticut's Beardsley Zoo. This is my first trip to Connecticut and I'm very excited to be here. We have some great interviews planned and I'm going to give you guys a little tour of the zoo here in Connecticut. Welcome back to my Animal Education Series. Today I'm at the Beardsley Zoo and may you introduce yourself? Yes, hi my name is John Marizzi. I'm an educator here at Connecticut's Beardsley Zoo in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Hi, I'm Elena Sabriano and I am a CDC volunteer in Beardsley Zoo. And what does CDC stand for? Um, Conservation Discovery Corps, and that's when we do a lot of educational purposes as well as we talk about our animals that we have here, as well as we do conservation work, and that's in the zoo as well as outside of the zoo with other programs. And what kind of fish do we have here behind us? Um, these are called brook trout or technically char in a sense. Char are technically not trout, they're in the trout family. They're in like the Somali family, that's with salmon, brook trout, reno trout, there's char as well. And so the, diff the way you would tell a char as opposed to, say, a brown trout or a regular trout is, is you see that it has a dark background with light spots, so that makes it a char. And, well, that's not exactly what just makes it a char, but that's how you recognize it as a char. Whereas a brown trout or a rainbow trout would have a light background and dark spots. So char have evolved in cold places. And that's why you have a lot of species like Arctic char you, and uh, you know, lake trout are actually uh, kind of char too. And so they need cold, clean water to survive. And that's why they're a good indicator of uh, the health of, of a watershed. And uh, so they have lost, especially here in uh, Connecticut and in, in New England, they have lost uh, a lot of. Uh, ground, uh, there are still healthy populations in Maine and Virginia, there are still some healthy populations. Uh, so they're still common, but they're only common in the headwaters of streams, meaning you know where the streams are born, high in the mountains or in the hillsides, but they're not found you know, in the major rivers anymore like they used to be. So what is the Beardsley Zoo doing to help with these trout? Well, thank you. I'm glad you're asking me that. Uh, so we help in two ways. Uh, one is with conservation and education. So through education, uh, we have a program such as the Conservation Discovery Corps, which is an award-winning uh, high school volunteer program where we educate people about conservation and nature and what problems the environment is facing. And uh, another way we educate people is uh, by having middle school kids from inner city Bridgeport come to the zoo once a month and they learn about trout, about watersheds, but because so many things affect the health of the watershed, we get to talk about a lot of things, you know, clean water, how water really is not an infinite resource, you know, it needs to be protected and conserved. Uh, we talk about um, climate change and how that is affecting the health of trout and of, of course it's affecting our environment too. And so, in this program that touches uh, so many different subjects, not only science, but also the humanities and art, uh, these, these kids, they learn, get to learn and have a deeper appreciation for the natural world uh, that surrounds them. So education is one way we do it, and another way is conservation. And uh, so uh, these trout are raised, uh, these are native brook trout. All the other trout found in Connecticut are not native. So the only native trout found in Connecticut are the brook trout. The other native salmonid is the Atlantic salmon, which is uh, not doing very well, unfortunately. Um, it's primarily, it's basically extinct from the Connecticut River, except for a few that come back because of human help. Um, so we release the trout that we grow here in, in the fall. So where would you uh, find this brook trout in the wild? The brook trout in the wild you would find them primarily in the east, uh, although in the west they are, have been introduced for anglers, and in some places they are actually become invasive, which is kind of a paradox, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so you would find them either where they are stocked by you know, local game agencies, and, but those are not really you know, natural. natural and 
that. Or you might find brook trout in little streams that are still uh, undamaged, or at least haven't been damaged too much by building of homes, the paving, paving of uh, roads, building of, uh, of dams. So primarily that means in the headwaters, and headwaters of streams meaning you know, in the uppermost parts where there's still usually trees, such as in the hills. What do these uh, trout eat in the wild? Well, that's a great question. Well, for someone like me who loves fishing and uh, who also, and who lets the fish go, by the way, so I, it's one of the things that I am really interested about is what do trout eat in the wild. And it depends on their age primarily and on their size, but especially when they're smaller. Well, when they're first born, they, they feed off the egg sac that they have, but then they start feeding on uh, really small invertebrates, and as they grow bigger, they will be able to feed on larger invertebrates, macroinvertebrates, and uh, but once they get to have to be a certain size that they're able to eat fish, they will eat other fish, including younger brook trout. Uh, so they're pretty much opportunists, uh, and uh, they have evolved in a very poor ecosystem, in a poor environment. Most streams here on the East Coast, uh, unlike Pennsylvania, which is one of the lucky exceptions, uh, are freestone streams, which is primarily it's water that comes from, from rainfall. So uh, these are not very rich streams. So these don't have, they don't have a lot of species of insects that, that live in these streams. And so these are opportunists. You know. So what can you tell us about fish in the classroom? Oh, so trout in the classroom is when we have middle school kids that come here for educational purposes to learn more about water quality as well as how the environment for these trout are. And kind of the fun part of it is they raise them when they're like little eggs and then they grow up and then they like get to release them. And then when you know when they're ready to release is when they kind of get rid of their par marks. And the par marks on like a trout shows like, the indication of like they're going to become an adult. And then when you release them, they can like breed in their So how many do you think that uh, have released here? John, how many have been released? Uh, have we released all together? Yes. Like, uh, about, about like a thousand a year. Oh something. gosh, hundreds. We go to Nanawak High School and we have an aquaculture program. And what we do is we raise trout from when they're pretty much eggs. And then they grow up through their par marks until they're pretty much halfway grown, like about this size or so. And when they're this size, we release them into our river, which is actually connected to the Quantic River. Okay. Oh, cool. Yeah. And then uh, we get the, the eggs and or the baby fish in our case, and the food are donated really generously by the Department of Energy and Environmental Protection. And uh, Trout Unlimited uh, also helps a number of the schools uh, in Connecticut. Um, and so we get food when it's when we first get the food for the babies. It's just like little dust, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, we get different bags. And then we get like eventually they get to be like more like a pellet size and then you like feed them that I think maybe like twice a day. Well thank you so much for telling us about the brook trout and the conservation efforts of uh, trying to save them. Thank you, it's been like our pleasure. And if you guys enjoyed this week's episode, don't forget to leave a big thumbs up down below, subscribe to our channel, and also don't forget to check out my Instagram at Kosher. And as always, I'll see you next week.